Okay, hello, and welcome back to part uh, two of this series. What we're going to be doing in this series, or in this part, is adding, well, just finishing off our list, storable list class thingy, and then we're going to be getting on to coding our actual command to use this list. And also we're going to be adding the, um, well, maybe that'll be the next part, the actual listener to check if the player is banned when they log in. So, what we're going to do is just come down here and we're going to add a couple of new methods that we'll use for various things later on um, and just you know generally useful methods so we'll create a new public method which is going to return a boolean value sort of true or false and we'll call this contains because we can't access our actual array list directly because it's private and also we don't really want to so we're going to sort of mirror a few of the methods it provides here so we're going to check to see if that list contains the value we pass in. So we can do that really simply just by returning the sort of function method from the actual list. So we can just do this values contains value and that will work perfectly fine. Done. Easy. The next one is add and remove. Obviously not in the same one but uh, it's basically that. So what we'll do is create a new public method again which is going to be void because it's not going to return anything. I'm going to just call this add and it's going to add the value. So what we can do is just again simply wrap the values, the method from here, done. And then the same goes for remove. So we can do public void remove string value. Um, we can just do this values remove value and that will remove the first one. What we could do actually is here we can sort of add a little safeguard against the um, value being added twice so we could do if this contains value is false only then add the value. And now we've got this contains method, what we should really do is up here we should use that instead of accessing the array list one directly just so that we've, we are, we're always using the same method if we ever want to make any changes like for example use a hash map instead of an array list or you know just any other kind of change um, we wouldn't have to worry about the contains method not being provided um, we'd only have to change it here essentially if that's the case so yeah that's that and the remove method we don't need to bother checking it because it will only remove it if it exists and the final thing is we need to well we're going to um, have a method to actually return all of the banned players just so that if for whatever reason you wanted to do that um, you could so for example you could have a command that lists all the banned players in game I'm not sure why that would be useful but you could so what we'll do is create a new public method and it's going to return an array list an array list of strings even and we're just going to call this get values. Not going to have any parameters, and it's just going to straight away return the actual list. So values. Okay, that's that done. And now that should be uppercase A, obviously. There we go. So now what we've got is, and something's wrong here, that shouldn't be there. There we go. So now what we've got is a class which we can use for storing any kind of list, well a list of strings so this could be um, band players is all I can think of at the moment but um, there's plenty of other uses um, for a plugin I've been working on recently it stores band players in a separate list to locally band players um, and also temporary band players in a separate list so anything that you can store in a list you can use this for so yeah, that's it. That's the whole point of it. It's a bit more versatile, I guess. Anyway, that's that done. So what we need to do now is actually create a object from this, which we're going to manipulate in our actual plugin. So we're going to go back to our main plugin class here, and we're going to create a new property, which is going to be a list store, and it's going to be protected, and it's going to be a list store, and we're going to call this uh, band. Yeah, that should be band players. Yeah, it should be band players. There we go. So that will need to be imported because it's in a separate package. So we'll just do that. And there we go. And then just here, under the log, we can create a new instance of it. So we can do this band players equals new 
list store. And remember, this wanted the file passing into it. So what we, we don't need to pass in the file name. We need to actually pass in a new file object. And the parameter for that is just a file name. So it's fairly straightforward. But there's a problem here because we need to make sure that the file folder actually exists. So we're going to bring that down here. And we're going to do a fairly simple um, check here just to make sure that the um, plugin folder actually exists, which is where we're going to keep our file. So, what we need to do first is get the plugin folder, which is just in the plugins folder itself, and it's going to be called Access Control. But again, if we rename our plugin, we um, don't necessarily want to have to change things manually in our code for the sake of maintainability. So, what we're going to do is define a string, which is going to be called plugin folder, except not plugin. This is going to be equal to this get data folder which we can use to get wherever bucket thinks we should keep our data and then from that we can get the absolute path not file path there we go and that's that done so then from that we can actually create a new file object so we could do, do new file plugin folder and we want to create this as a folder if it doesn't exist so we can wrap that in brackets and then do dot um, make does like so. And what this will do is create a new file object, which is actually a folder object really, but there isn't a folder object. Well, it might be, I haven't checked. But it creates a new file object which represents our folder, our plugins folder. And then if it can, it makes the folders. Now this will just silently fail if the folders already exist. It won't overwrite anything. It will just leave them there and not do anything. So that's just quite a nice way, a one-line way of checking if um, if your plugin folder, you know, make sure, making sure your plugin folder is actually available. So then down here, where we're just, you know, our file name, we can just do plugin folder, and we can add on a forward slash, which we can get from the file. Uh, thingy separator that's the forward slash or on Windows it'd be a backward slash and then after that we can give the file name so we can just say band players dot text okay and that will now create an, a list and it'll create the file um, so that we can actually use it so at this point we can actually test this because all of our code should be in a way that it should actually create this file and it should be all working so we can export this just like so and we give the server, mm, I left the server running, so we'll stop the server. And we'll start the server and see if we get any errors, which we might quite possibly might. And let's see. Nope, that's good. So we can look in our plugins folder and we should see, in theory, if I go into the Minecraft server uh, and then the plugins folder, you can see we get this access folder, con uh, access control folder created. Now if we open that up, you can see we get bandplayers.txt, which is currently empty. You can see at the bottom I've got zero bytes. And this file, this, mm, the folder has been created by this line, and the file was created by this line here. And also the load method, um, well, it hasn't been triggered yet, but that's what we're going to do next. We're going to have it load or attempt to load any um, values in the file so that you know they're back in the plugin, so they can be kept banned, basically. So going back to our main class, once we've determined that, um, well, once we've, did, once we've loaded this list, what we're going to do is just do this band players load like so, and that will load the files from the list. So that's just calling our method here, which we coded a moment ago. Okay, so that's that done. The next thing we're going to do is add the actual band command. So let's go to our here and we'll create a new class to handle the ban command and we'll call this ban executor for a moment for a reason I'll make clear in a moment so we'll just hit finish what we're actually going to do is create a new package to contain all of our command executors so we'll right click on here no we won't we'll right click on the source folder go to new package and we'll call this the same thing except we'll end it in executors so bucket or commands actually Okay, and again, same problem has happened. So let's hit, or has it? Well, let's refresh anyway, just out of habit. 
hit refresh just to make sure nothing's gone wrong and we're actually going to move this class into our new package let Eclipse work it out and we'll do the same for our kick executor like so and now because this, is a, because this is in a separate package we can rename it with F2 there that was to just kick executor which is just a little bit simpler and we'll just let Eclipse work everything out which is what that was saying and there we go now there is obviously apparently something wrong in our kick executor so let's just look at that and what that will be is the access property yep so here we're using plugin.log and if you remember in our plugin where we set this to protected that only allows for classes within the same package to use it so what we actually need to do is set this to public and we're going to need to do the same thing for our band players list because we're going to need to use that in the band executor list okay so that's that done and actually what we could do is move that into the util class because that is somewhat general but also it's not really or is it well it doesn't matter okay so what we're going to be doing now is actually coding our ban command so we'll go to our ban executor and we'll have it implement the command executor as necessary and that'll need to be imported and there'll be a method we need to add so let's just do both of those there we go and we'll just remove this extra nonsense okay and we'll have it return true for reasons I've previously explained and then we'll just rename these methods or parameters so sender command second time label still don't know what that is I will look it up actually because I'm curious and arguments okay so the syntax checking for this is going to be pretty similar to the kick executor command but I'll go through it again because that was from a previous tutorial well sort of so down here what we're going to do is check to make sure that they have specified one argument only so we'll do if args length is not equal to one we will show an error and the error is going to be the usage information so we'll just send it to the player so sender send message we'll make it red because it's an error so chat color red usage is ban player name that should be an underscore I think it probably is that should have an N on it there we go then we need to return true to prevent our code running any further and we need to spell chat color right no it needs to be imported there we go so then down here we can try and get the player object again to make sure that they're online um, however it does make sense for you to be able to ban a player that is offline so we're not going to you know we're not going to make sure we're not going to return we're only going to kick them if they're online that's what we're going to be doing anyway so what we're going to do is just again try and get the player so we'll do player we'll call this one ban and this is going to be equal to plugin which doesn't exist yet so I'll have to add that so essentially this is the same as the kick executor thing so we need to create a constructor which is going to accept our access control plugin that's going to set it oops, to an, a property private property which is going to be called plugin so we'll just do this plugin equals plugin. Now I think I might continue this in part f three um, because this, is, this video is getting a little bit too long, and people get mad when I do that. So come back for part three, and we'll continue. And I'm sorry for this sort of awkward break, but um, not really a way around that.